Hey, what's up you battleries? Daily Tactics here. How's it going with you? I am back today with another Star Wars video style essay. Today is a topic that I've actually been thinking about for a long time and I finally decided to write it out and express my thoughts on the matter. I've always wondered, given all of the subtle quotes and phrases from Qui-Gon Jinn, if he had predicted Order 66 way back during The Phantom Menace. Now before we get into the meat and potatoes of the argument that I've constructed, just remember that this is simply a theory that I have put together. There isn't any hard evidence that this is a fact. But in my opinion, I think it is a likely possibility that Qui-Gon Jinn knew Order 66 was going to happen. So what I'm going to try and do today is present the evidence to you and let you make your own educated decision on the matter. So without further ado, Let's get this started. So, to start off with, there's going to be a little bit of backstory into Qui-Gon Jinn. He was obviously the apprentice to traitor Count Dooku, and he himself was also known to break the Jedi Code quite often. Whenever he saw something he didn't think was correct, or didn't think was the right thing to do, he would go against the wishes of the Jedi Council. This made it so he was unable to join the High Council of the Jedi, and Obi-Wan himself says that he would likely be a member of it had he followed the rules more closely. But, in going by his own path and not always obeying the Jedi Code, Qui-Gon began to develop stronger connections with the Force, and eventually, even learn the secrets of after death, so his conscience could be maintained after he left the physical world. This curiosity he had almost actually landed him on the wrong side of the force, however. It led to him beginning to feel the pull of the dark side. Eventually, this accumulated in a single, potentially life-changing moment, where Jin entered into a dark side monument. He had a powerful force vision and was almost swayed, but the light side came to him and he broke free. This vision, he concluded, meant that violence by the Jedi could lead to them becoming the very thing they swore to stop. This very moment is where I think Jin began to think something was afoot in the galaxy. The violence he sees could be alluding to the upcoming Clone Wars, in which the Jedi Anakin Skywalker, as Obi-Wan so astutely puts it, became the very thing he swore to destroy. Now, this is very on-the-nose prediction for Order 66. But Qui-Gon likely didn't know what it all meant at the time. He just knew that something big was coming up, and it could lead to the fall of the Order. A number of years later, at the beginning of The Phantom Menace, we see Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi entering into negotiations with the Trade Federation. The negotiations were short, and the two Jedi end up on the planet of Naboo's surface. They soon come to realize that this was not just some simple blockade but was rather an entire planetary invasion force. There are millions of battle droids, hundreds of tanks, and these troopers were arresting all military and political officials that they possibly could. At this point, Qui-Gon is likely realizing that this could be the premonition which he had seen previously, and that the oncoming war could possibly cause the Jedi to turn. The next scene that I think helps to solidify this argument is when Jar Jar, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan are traveling through the oceans of Naboo, and Qui-Gon says the famously memed line, there's always a bigger fish. I think this is him sort of subconsciously vocalizing his realization that something bigger is afoot in the whole universe and that the fish are acting as a metaphor for the upcoming Clone Wars. To him, the war is the small fish, and there will be a bigger fish coming out to swallow up the previous one aka Order 66, being the real reason behind the entirety of the war. I also think it could potentially be alluding to the fact that there is always a bigger Sith leader, like how Maul was really under the bigger fish of Palpatine, and the same with Count Dooku. Qui-Gon is looking at the fish as a metaphor at this moment for the feelings he is having towards the Force overall, though. Finally, Qui-Gon manages to find Anakin Skywalker in the desert planet of Tatooine. He immediately recognizes him as being extremely powerful in the Force, with a whole lot of midi-chlorians and stuff. He comes to the conclusion that Anakin is the one who can bring balance back to the Force and help to maintain the Jedi Order. 
This is all wrong, as we know now, and Qui-Gon Jinn had put all his eggs in the wrong basket. The final scene with Qui-Gon is him dying with Obi-Wan holding him tightly. He utters the words, It is too late. Which I take to mean that Qui-Gon knew that Order 66, or rather to him a massive betrayal and fall of the Jedi Order, was in effect and was coming no matter what. So he tells Obi-Wan to train Anakin and make sure that he is powerful. This is really Qui-Gon's final ploy to stop the fall of the Jedi Order due to Order 66. Obviously this ends up failing in the end, but his death scene foreshadows the coming chaos that will occur throughout the entirety of the galaxy. So to summarize, after Qui-Gon has a personal experience with the dark side of the Force, the Force sort of hints to him that there is about to be a big change caused by a corruption in the ranks of the Jedi Order. After this, he is attempting to put the pieces together, and we get little glimpses of his mental thought process throughout the rest of the film where he is present. In the end though, he doesn't live long enough to really figure it all out, and on a Hail Mary gut reaction puts his faith towards the wrong boy. I wonder that if perhaps he hadn't died to Maul, that he actually would have had some guidance from the Force and him being less blinded than the rest of the Jedi Order around him, then he possibly could have been the savior to the Force instead of, in his place, promoting Anakin, who ultimately brings down the light side of the Force and the Republic as a whole. So what do you guys think? Is there sufficient evidence here that Qui-Gon perhaps had predicted Order 66 and knew that something big was about to happen that would alter everything forever? Or could no one possibly have predicted this, and I'm reading a little too far in between the lines here? Be sure to let me know in the comment section below because I'd love to hear your opinion. Regardless, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I know video essays aren't exactly the most popular thing on the channel, but I really enjoy doing a little bit of research here, writing these out, and uh, the amount of support and love I get in the comment section really means a lot to me, and you guys have been giving me great feedback and topics to talk about and things like that, so I will be sure to do a lot of those in the future, and I've jotted them down in my little notebook of ideas and things, so keep laying them on me. I'd love to keep doing them because, I don't know, this is a fun little page in my YouTube journey to start doing some more of these video essays and things like that. Don't worry, normal content will be continuing and things like that. But regardless, once again, thank you so much. Comment right and subscribe if you enjoyed. Check out all my social media links are in the description below. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Discord, Overtone Team, um, what else I got? Steam Group. If you want to support me on Patreon, that's always nice too. Uh, all right, I'm out of things to plug. Thank you guys. I'll see y'all later. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.